We're getting to the end of the day now, so thank you for sticking with us. But please do hold on a little while longer as we've got a very interesting guest joining us up right now. They're joining us from one of Australia's most iconic retail brands, a company that has been family owned for 123 years with 190 stores nationwide. I'm sure many of us have taken advantage of their quality but affordable workwear, lifestyle and schoolwear over the years. With 1,200 employees, $250 million in revenue and 12 million transac transactions a year, this organisation certainly knows how to run a tight business. The organisation is, of course, Lowe's, and today I'm joined by Jim Condonis, their Chief Financial Officer, to discuss how they manage their 190 leases across their portfolio in an environment that's becoming increasingly regulated due to new compliance standards of AASB 16 and IFRS 16. Welcome, Jim. G'day. How are you? Awesome. So, Jim, I know that you've been using MRI for these 190 leases over the last six to 12 months, uh, which we'll dive into soon. But before we do, I wanted to get a little bit of background from you about, you know, you, um, about Lowe's and about the, the retail industry and, and sort of how COVID has impacted things and sort of some of those main challenges that you're facing. Yeah, I think that's the key word there, Kai. Um, challenges, uh, you know, if you know anything about retail, especially um, Australian uh, retail has been in the last couple of years, uh, it's been tough. Um, and, and you know, uh, Lowe's has been around for, as, as you mentioned, for a long, long, long time. Um, but we, we, we felt the pinch as well leading up to leading up to the COVID of the pandemic. So, um, you know, the pandemic has just added a, an extra burden uh, uh, for, for organisations uh, like, like ourselves. You know, we, we, we faced challenges uh, before COVID and we faced challenges during COVID. And, and unfortunately, I can't say post COVID because we're still in the middle of it. Um, the, the challenges um, that predominantly that our business faces and face um, I think it's inherent in most businesses. Um, things like your labour costs, you know, uh, cost of labour for, for retailers, for any organisation is, is always, uh, is always uh, a challenge. Um, occupancy costs also when you're dealing with, with uh, landlords and especially the major landlords. Um, and then the commercial agreements with, with um, landlords as well. There, there's always been challenges in that area uh, and now, uh, especially during a pandemic type situation, um, those uh, agreements are put to the test. So yeah, so we, we, we're finding that, um, you know, it's still remaining a challenge for us. Our property people are continuously, you know, talking to landlords and, and we're retrospectively talking about payments, you know, going back to March this time last year, we're, we're, we're getting through it and, and uh, uh, you know, Hand on my heart, I think I think uh, we're at the pointy end of it, but I know uh, other businesses are still going through uh, for that major challenge. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been an interesting, uh, you know, I, I extend it further than 12 months. Interesting 36 months in in, in retail. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, there must have been a mixed bag of results. You know, obviously facing two pandemics. So it's good to hear that you know you you're finding some successes throughout there as well. Yeah, look, there's you know, in terms of you know I, I can only speak about the retail industry. Um, well, I'm not expert across all sectors, but um, I know I know our sector's been been hit uh, quite hard. You know, and anything that's uh, not essential. So you know, if it's your undies, if it's your, if it's your sleepwear, or even tracking pants, you know, they they become an essential item in the last. Uh, 12 months, but anything non-essential such as ties and 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 suits, um, you know that they've been they've been hit very hard. And businesses that you know uh, focus on those type of uh, items and and you know pardon to the, the the female audience, but I can speak from from a men's menswear business. Um, um, you know uh, it's 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 definitely uh, interesting uh, times ahead, and 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 the, that product mix has changed. You know, uh, so business like like. Not so much Lowe's because we've got a, a range of, of, of products that we're able to, to also enjoy, as you said, the benefit of, of you know, people staying at home and wearing their tracky pants and sloppy joes. 
Um, we couldn't get enough of them last year, so yeah, uh, that, that 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 was that was good in, in in covering some of the you know other areas that that we did did lose sales in. But then you know um, other other industries, um, you know your travel, your travel retailers, any 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 poor business that was in you know operating in a food court, you know that they've been hit very hard. Um, and and the counter to that, obviously electronics, electronics and supermarkets, they had a you know record years. So um, yeah, it's a mixed bag of results um, in terms of uh, the industry. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Thinking before the pandemic, you were managing all of your leases in sort of a, an in-house, fairly basic um, piece of tech, um, little more than Excel spreadsheets. Am mm. I correct? I, I imagine that didn't help things when you were sort of, you know, pre-COVID. Yeah, no, I, I, look, absolutely. Um, there was two pandemics last year, or I still is to a degree. One we've just already spoken about. The other one was AASB 16, especially for us finance people. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it was uh, probably something that we didn't need uh, in that time of the year. We, we knew it was coming, um, but it's a very technical standard and uh, it, it got us um, finance people really having to think uh, outside the square. How do we go forward and, and, and manage, manage um, you know, this area, manage our you know, external regulators' expectations as well, um, whether it be audit teams or whoever, um, you know, we, we really need to to uh, work very hard in, in an already challenging time to look for solutions. Um, and that's what we did um, right in the heart of the pandemic. We uh, we did some did some research and we, we, we did stumble across a little package called uh, MRI um, and, and um, I suppose the rest is history, Kai. And you know, we had a, a young salesman that, that did a very good job in uh, in promoting the product. Um, it was it wasn't really that much of a hard sell, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, but um, it was uh, when we looked at the system and explored the capabilities of the system, what it can can't do. Um, it, it became a no-brainer for us, as as you alluded to. You know, most of our leases, 190 plus leases. You know, we were operating, uh, we're sort of managing from a, from a, space, a spreadsheet, from a, uh, I suppose from an uh, accounting perspective. Um, operationally, we did have other basic systems, um, but I learned pretty quick smart that it wasn't going to be the way forward uh, using spreadsheets to manage, well, to, to, to also um, incorporate, you know, the, the requirements of AASB 16 or IFRS depending on which part of the world you're in. Um, so we, we decided to, to move across to MRI and um, the challenge was for a business that was mature um, as us, um, the challenge was to bring how much how much history do we bring across into the system? You know, we had, we've got leases for 40, 50 years. Sorry, we've had relationship with 40, 40 or 50 years with, with some of these landlords. Um, and you know how much data do, do you do you bring across? So that was that was one challenge, and the other challenge was how we did that. Um, but the good thing about uh, the MRI system, it had a lot, it does have a lot of pigeonholes. So um, you know we speak about um, sort of um, the benefits of it. It does allow you to bring um, information into the system. Um, to be very honest with you, the financial information is very basic. What we require. Um, it's more about the operational, so it, it suits two teams, you know, finance and operational teams. So yeah, so um, bringing it across was was um, an interesting exercise in itself, given the circumstances of, of the pandemic. But um, but yeah, we we did move away from the basic systems that we were operating. Sure, and it kind of sounds like, I mean, we're obviously hit with a few unprecedents last year, you know, never before have we had a global pandemic sort of shut down businesses across the globe. And, and additionally, we've never had a, a regulatory or rarely do we get a regulatory change like IFRS mm -hmm. 16 hit us. And I mean, both of those hitting the Australian market at the same time would have been huge. So, I mean, how has this piece of software maybe helped build processes um, you know, for you, has it, has it helped in any way, um, you know, taking some of that load off so that you guys could just get on with, with the work? Yeah, look, it definitely has. Um, I, um, 
my approach to, to MRI and, and systems like this is um, it's a phased approach. So we're in phase one. Um, we've been using the system now for, for about nine months. Um, and we're just, we're just at the point now where I can start looking at phase two. Um, you know, obviously, the, the technical aspects of AASP 16 um, was, was an area that we needed to, to work very closely with our audit team. And mm -hmm. we did involve our external auditors in the, in the whole process. Um, just so they felt comfortable with all the mechanics of the of, of, of the of the system um, and potentially the outputs of it as well. You know, very, very technical when you start talking about right of use assets and liabilities, amortization, and then then you have clearing accounts as well. So um, mm. it's it's a quite interesting um, um, concept. But the the beauty of of the system um, is the ability to 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 you know, you've got a lot of areas where you can capture the data um, and 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 then capture the, the correct data uh, and also um, being able to extract the, the the reports, the information that we require uh, on, a, on a timely on a timely basis. And, and that's and that's what we've done. Uh, one, one advantage of the system is, but um, the other, especially from an accounting perspective, the one of the beauties of the system is the fact that you're able to process um, test test journals, so to speak. It's a very technical area, especially when you when you transition across and you know initially there's a lot of transitioning um, journals that need to be created. So we spend a lot of time creating journals, testing the journals, processing in the system. If they're not correct, the the, the great function is the undo function. What well, not. Yeah not the undo button, but they've got a function where you can just revert back. Um, and I don't know if there's any finance people listening out there, you know, one thing that we do well in finance is what we do our business and do really good, really good job, but we stuff up. And when we stuff up, we stuff up big. So <laughs> having the ability to undo stuff um, yeah. helps a lot. Nice security blanket, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, I, know, I do remember you mentioning how important the auditors were in this whole process throughout the early mm. sales process. It was something that was important to you. You work very closely with them. And I think that, you know, uh, it's really pleasing to hear that you've mentioned that, you know, they could come into the actual implementation process, learn with you, get as much trust in the system as you ended up with. So that's a really pleasing outcome. Yeah, you know, definitely. And, and, you know, it does help through that whole audit process when they, you know, they do send their field teams out, out well, they don't send their field teams out now, but they, they virtually audit us now. Um, and then that, that assists that whole process of, of you know, getting, uh, the, having integrity in the numbers, especially around, you know, double S, B16 type uh, accounting. Um, so involving them in the process um yeah just made made my life a lot simpler as well and i and i imagine they really appreciate transparency you know yeah. it makes their life a lot easier makes your life a lot easier everyone's on the same page correct so uh, i mean I, I wanted to ask as well i mean obviously you've taken on or you sorry you've decided to take on a piece of new software in the middle of a pandemic mm. big decision that can be stressful at any time of the year um you know obviously revamping things change a, a change to a business can be big how did mm. it go how do you feel it went look um to be very honest with you i had two major projects happening at the same time outside the pandemic um so it was challenging personally uh to, to, to manage both look I'm, I'm happy with with um, the implementation. You know, it, it was a little bit difficult because there was distance between between you know uh, MRI and ourselves. But the support, I, I, I can't speak highly uh, of, of the support, the telephone support or Zoom support that we got um, from MRI in, in helping us uh, implement um, the system. You know, very technical area, and and you know, I'm I'm, I'm no rocket scientist. But um, you know, I, I I can you know I can uh, assimilate into, into products. Uh, but but I, I did find um, um, probably the, the workflow of, of the way MRI operated um, the system workflow a bit daunting at the beginning. Um, but but your, your team was was really uh, great and 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 
helped us, especially for those technical aspects. And look, by I think lease 189, I started to get what the system does. <laughs> Uh, so it was all it was all good after that. But 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 uh, look, it, are there improvements in the system? I suppose from a feedback perspective, back to, to back to the company. Yes, there can be. You know, the, the system should always be dynamic, and, and I think um, um, you know we, we could definitely improve improve on it. But you know, once once you worked out you know, what information was critical to the business. And, and it's still a work in progress to a degree because I've still got our operational team feeding, you know, operational type information in the system. Uh, from a finance perspective, I've got all the critical information that I needed. Uh, but once we fed that in and I started seeing the, the you know, technical reports like a capitalization schedule, um, it made my life well. It made me feel a lot better that the fact that that we're starting to get the information that that you know uh, that we require out of the system. Um, but the way it's presented as well it helps. And, and you know uh, another another I suppose plus for MRI is the fact that we do you know there's 160 standard reports in the system, um, and that helps to you know again not a lot of those, a lot of those aren't all financial. And operational type reports, but having having that um, abundance of information available at your fingertips uh, mm. is great. Well, I guess that kind of speaks as well to your phase phase rollout. We've 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 locked down in phase one those finances, the auditing team utilizing those reports, and now you can grow within the system, which I know was was a was a key driver for you when looking for your software. So certainly one thing that MRI prides it on with its software. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, we're um, we're in phase one and looking at uh, now integrating into our ERP system. I thought it might have been a bit too much to do in the, in, in in the first in the first instance. So um, I'm glad I I made that decision up front. Uh, but definitely now we're looking at ER, you know bringing that system into the ERP uh, and 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 then also um, automating automating our our landlord invoices in terms of grabbing the electronic information and feeding it directly into, into MRI. Um, and I think that's where we're going to get the major benefits from a productivity perspective, because um, we'll have a, you know, hopefully we'll have one source of truth. And, and, and from a, a leasing uh, perspective, that'll be MRI. Um, and then finance and operational people can both, both access those, um, that information. Um, yeah, so looking forward to to that, and we're just about to embark on that uh, on that journey. Fantastic, and you're really looking forward to making sure that we can do everything we can to make that a success. Right. And and again, you know, it really is fantastic to hear that you know our team has done a, an excellent job with you with with the implementation. You feel secure in that. I, I wanted to ask as well: Were there any unexpected benefits that came from taking on MRI? Anything you'd like to point out? Yeah, look, I think we've already um, um, mentioned a couple um, in terms of the amount of reports that that are, that are just standard reports that are available. But the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, us, believe it or not, us, us accounts can become a bit creative. Um, we do like to create our own reports as well. And, um, you know, um, that, that is quite easy to do as well in the system. Um, importing the data, importing sales information, um, I've started to to do now, so you know, operational people need sales information, so we started to to import that. Um, in fact, I did a whole bunch of um, integrations yesterday, and and they seem to have gone through okay. So um, yeah, I think that that that's that was that's been good because sometimes you know systems can be cumbersome, and 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 um, you know, there's a lot of lot of um, roadblocks in getting information into into to, to systems. But the way I the way from what I can see from MRI's perspective is quite seamless. Um, you know, having having uh, the ability to put a lot of information in the system, which, which was pleasing as well. Again, less from a finance finance team perspective, more more so from operational people. As I said, we're, we're quite a mature business. We've got a lot of data, a lot of history. Um, so we've been able to, or we continue to bring that information across. Um, and so far, I, I haven't heard anything. Um, uh, detrimental in the fact that you know where do I where do I keep that information or if there's, there's plenty of opportunities to capture capture data yeah so 
to me, they're, they're, the, they're the key elements. And I, th I think it's made, you know, it's made a, a very potentially technical and difficult area. It's, it's simplified the, the whole process um, for, for, fi for the finance teams. Uh, as I said, you know, it's um, when you talk about capitalization schedules and there's some little technical um, requirements there and having that transparency, uh, having that order trail, um, which you don't get in spreadsheets, or well, not not that clear anyway. Um, having having that ability to to see changes um, and and kind of almost forecast what the result is going to be by processing test entries. Um, having having that that uh, functionality, I think, is a uh, is a real benefit to to any system. Yeah. Amazing. No, that's that's excellent. Thank you so much for that information. And look, I I think you know just to before we wrap up the future. Well, you're well into your journey now with MRI, um, but I imagine there's more on the, the roadmap, plenty more for, for uh, to come for you and for Lowe's. Can you give us a little bit of insight at, at what's next? Look, um, some of the challenges that we face, it sort of extends outside of the occupancy area or the leasing area as well, and, it, and our labour cost is a, is a huge component of the business. You know, the pandemic has, has brought um, as we as we mentioned, a whole bunch of new challenges. Um, you know, it's changed the way we operate, um, not only within this building but outside the building. You know, having 190 stores. You know, um, we, previous to the pandemic, we we speak about the customer experience, and you know, you want to custom, engage the customer and walk them through a you know a, a whole process of a, of a sale and and really um, get them involved. Um, and COVID or well, you know, the pandemic split all that out on its head. You know, customers now you're almost sort of walking outside the shop and asking for a pair of socks, you're kind of throwing the, the socks at them and they'll throw the money at you. You know, it's that type of that type of situation now where the customer really wants to get in and, and, and get out. And we have to acknowledge that. So we've changed the way we operate in stores. Um, you know, what it's led to, to be very honest with you, is, is, is reviewing our cost models in stores and, you know, the that the headcount has changed significantly. So what that's led to as well is led to us in this, you know, within the an, a, a centralised, you know, office system, looking at to improve the productivity within stores, taking away a lot of the administrative burdens. So what I'm leading to is, you know, automation. We've looked at automating a lot of functions within stores, a lot of functions within, you know, these type of environments. Um, and, and MRI is, is definitely... Uh, helped us in that area and is going to continue to help us because we were able to, um, as I said, limit the, the touch points of, 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 you know, paper invoices and all that kind of stuff. And we just bring that straight into the system. A lot of companies have, have embarked down that path well before this, which is great, but we've, we've just jumped on the bandwagon now. Um, so digital, digitalizing, if that's such a word, I'm not a very digital person, uh, if that's such a word, you know, that's what we're looking at uh, doing throughout the whole company. So bringing in systems like MRI to, to, to increase productivity and, and, and just, just um, yeah, just, just make place more efficient, as, as best as I can describe it, yeah. No, fantastic. Look, look, mate, it's been really fantastic to, to catch up with you here today. And thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, look, thanks for joining me today, Jim. Thanks, Kai. My pleasure, mate. And um, thanks for the promo. You did, a, you know, you, I think you're next in line for one of those Lowe's ads, mate. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. Don't you worry. Cheers. See you, mate. And thank everyone else for being on the line. If, if you'd like to learn more about MRI, and how we can help you manage your leases, whether they be real estate, equipment, or otherwise, please hit the link uh, in the resource section and fill out your details and I'll be in touch. So that concludes day one of MRI Ascend. Make sure you join us again tomorrow uh, as we kick off at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern time uh, with the at work keynote and have a full agenda all the way through to 1.45. One session I'm really looking forward to is building safety and present management at 11.15 a.m. This session will show you how to use some really cool tech to keep track of who's entering your work site or office. That's employees, visitors, contractors um, and customers, etc. It's obviously perfect for COVID, but also useful for evacuation tracking and really anyone who needs to keep track of who's on site at any one time. 
that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us.